On today's show, Robert Llewellyn's inaugural fully charged live show was a complete hit over in the UK last weekend. Nissan says it's developed a software fix for apparent battery degradation in the 30 kilowatt hour Nissan Leafs. And Elon Musk says that he really wasn't joking when he was talking about adding thrusters to a special SpaceX package for the next generation Tesla Roadster. These stories and more coming in a sec. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki, your resident Ecotech host and following a week off, the reason for which you'll find out in a second, I've got a lot of stories to share today. So let's get on with it. Last weekend, my good friend Robert Llewellyn and his team at Fully Charged held the first ever Fully Charged live show at the Silverstone Racetrack in the UK, and I was there. In fact, it's the reason I wasn't able to do a show last week. With more than 6,000 paying attendees, 75 exhibitors, 40 speakers, and more electric cars than you could count, it was not only an amazing weekend to attend and be part of, but also showed just how seriously people are taking plug-in vehicles and renewable energy. Interestingly too, many attendees were non-plug-in owners who were there just to find out more about plug-in vehicles. Here's to next year's event and thanks to Robert, Johnny and Helen for presenting the event. Thanks to my fellow panellists for joining in and of course the entire Fully Charged team for making this event a rip-roaring success. Oh, and thanks to those of you who came up to me at Fully Charged Live and told me just how much you love this channel. It gave me the warm fuzzies. Earlier this week, following hints dropped at its previous quarterly earnings call, Tesla laid off approximately 9% of its worldwide workforce, equivalent to around 4,100 employees. While it was expected that some of the job cuts would come from management reorganization, I've been contacted by several former employees who held a wide range of jobs, including those in Tesla Energy, Solar Panel and Automotive Divisions. Talking to Business Insider, other former employees said they were told of the layoffs using a video conference with 250 other employees. Even those salespeople who'd hit their quotas were let go, with some complaining that they felt very let down by the company. In a leaked email to employees, Tesla CEO Elon Musk said the action was required now so that Tesla would never have to lay off employees again. But sources close to the company say that Tesla will now be severely understaffed with employees already working 60-hour weeks to keep up with workload. Chinese-backed automaker Byton, which unveiled its first concept car at CES 2018 in Las Vegas earlier this year, has just unveiled a second concept car at CES Asia. Called the K-Byte concept, it promises level 4 autonomous driving and may end up entering production alongside the first concept car, which Byton is now calling the M-Byte. For that, Byton says it needs money and it's just announced the closing of its Series B funding round, a round which sees it gain around $500 million to help it fund continued progress in mass production, research and development, and product development. $500 million may seem like a lot of money, but it's worth remembering that Tesla burns through an estimated six and a half thousand dollars per minute. And in that context, it seems Byton is going to need a whole lot more money to bring its own vehicles to market. Over the past eight months or so, owners of 2016 and 2017 Nissan Leafs fitted with 30 kilowatt hour battery packs have been reporting apparent massive drops in battery capacity over extremely short periods of time, suggesting that the 30 kilowatt hour battery packs in these model year Leafs were aging at an extremely high rate. Now, after some extensive research, Nissan has announced it's begun a service campaign to reprogram the battery controllers in affected vehicles, using a new battery calibration routine that should eliminate the problem. Rather than actual real-world battery degradation, it appears that battery controllers in affected cars were miscalculating state of charging capacity, causing increasingly pessimistic range reports. Owners of affected cars will be contacted by Nissan in due course, with the reprogramming occurring free under warranty.
After promising its Nero EV would offer a real-world range of 238 miles, which is the same as the Chevrolet Bolt EV, earlier this year at CES Las Vegas, Kia has officially unveiled the Nero EV in South Korea, promising a range of 450 kilometers, 280 miles, on the European test cycle. As I've previously noted, the Nero EV will be offered with a choice of two different battery packs around the world, with most customers getting a 64 kilowatt hour battery pack as standard, with a smaller 39.2 kilowatt hour battery pack available in select markets, essentially making it identical in specification to the Kona EV from Kia's sister company, Hyundai. Talking of which, that very vehicle, the Hyundai Kona EV, or rather a pre-production model, made its official Kiwi debut this week after the vehicle received massive public interest. While Europeans will get a choice of both long and short range battery packs like the Kia Nero EV, the Kona EV will only be sold in New Zealand with a 64 kilowatt hour battery pack, giving a real world range in excess of 400 Ks. Compatible with 100 kilowatt CCS quick chargers, it's going to be quite a fun car to drive along New Zealand's roads, and deliveries are set to begin in August this year. So if you want to get one, you best get down to your local Hyundai dealer pretty quick to arrange your interest. Continuing its move away from offering battery rental only options for its electric vehicles, Renault has announced this week that it will now offer Renault Kangoo ZE and Renault Master ZE commercial vehicles with battery packs included. Already available as an option for the Zoe ZE, the option to buy the battery pack outright does away with monthly battery rental plans for those who don't want them, but it still gives customers the option to rent a battery should they be worried about battery degradation. Personally, I always found the battery rental scheme a little annoying with my Renault Twizy, so I'm interested to see just how many commercial Renault ZE customers agree. After telling us for months and months that its first mass-produced electric car would be called the Mission E, Porsche has announced that the all-electric performance sedan will be known as the Porsche Taycan. Alongside announcing the name change, Porsche has published a series of teaser videos suggesting perhaps some physical or aesthetic changes to the production vehicle will be coming when it arrives later this year. At the same time, it's also announced a brand new digital charging platform for EVs, which it says will give both electric and plug-in hybrid Porsche owners easy access and simple billing to charging stations around the world. Not to be outdone by Porsche, Mercedes-Benz has also been busy this week showcasing its latest working prototype for its first mass-produced EV, the EQA. It did that by taking the sleek compact plug-in to Sicily, Italy, where it put the working prototype through its paces in front of a film crew. Looking at the video, it seems that the EQA prototype is far from production ready. There's still an air of concept car about it, but Mercedes-Benz maintains we should see it entered into production in the not too distant future. It's official. Following an ever-increasing ramp-up of interest and publicity for its all-electric iPace SUV, Jaguar has made its first delivery. The lucky customer? Scottish tennis sensation Andy Murray, who was handed the keys back in late March by fellow sports personality and Formula E race driver Nelson Piquet Jr. While the handoff made for a great video, it's not clear if the vehicle handed to Mr Murray really counts as the first production iPace or if it's just a late pre-production intent vehicle for publicity. Either way, as far as I can tell, other customers are still waiting to get their cars and I'm still waiting for a test drive, so I'll keep you posted when I get some time behind the wheel. And finally, last weekend, Tesla CEO Elon Musk joked on Twitter that Tesla would offer a SpaceX package for its next generation Roadster, complete with actual rockets to give it phenomenal performance. At the time, everyone thought Musk was joking, but it turns out that he wasn't. This week, he detailed a SpaceX package would indeed replace the Roadster rear seats with two small composite overwrapped pressure vessels that would act as thrusters, releasing a super high stream of air from the rear of the car to provide high thrust. It seems a little crazy, but it's actually physically possible with the COPVs charged using a compressor powered by the Roadster's battery pack. I'm not convinced this is going to get past regulators, but it's a fun concept, right? And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, well, send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness, so make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. 
In the meantime, have a fantastic weekend. Make sure you do something fun and don't forget to support New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. Keep those wind turbines spinning. You know you want to. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.